Switzerland should absolutely be on your bucket list to visit. It's known to be one of the most expensive countries in the world, but you can still have an amazing time enjoying everything the country has to offer, even if you're on a budget. So whether you're doing research for an upcoming trip or even just considering traveling to Switzerland, there's something for you in this video. Here are some of my favorite tips, favorite cities, and other recommendations. I'm putting out some more travel content very soon about my recent trip to Lisbon and Paris, so be sure to subscribe if you want to see more like this. First off, transportation. No matter where in Switzerland you're thinking of going, the Swiss Travel Pass or the half fare card is going to be a great deal. The Swiss Travel Pass is a one-time fee that gives you unlimited access to trains, buses, and some boats in Switzerland for a period of time. Whereas the half fare card gives you exactly that, half fare. Either way, having a pass of some sort helps you maximize your trip because there's so much to explore and you don't want the cost of individual train tickets to deter you from getting around the country. Another thing about traveling around Switzerland, buses and trains are really reliable and on time. I highly recommend the SBB app. It's the easiest and most convenient for the trains and honestly for the buses, we use Google Maps and it was quite reliable. One note, a lot of these smaller towns that we went to with an interlochen were within the mountains. Those are only accessible via a funicular that does cost extra often. So be sure to double check all of the details with a travel guide. In Switzerland, public transit operates on an honor system. You're not always checked for your pass, but if you are checked and don't have a valid pass, you will receive a fine. Next, I'm gonna cover a few weather related tips. First, I highly recommend Meteo Swiss. If you're planning to do mountain stuff, definitely wait until day of to figure out your plans because the forecast can change entirely at any moment. So you wanna stay flexible on certain things. For example, we knew that we were going to spend four nights in Interlaken, but we waited until the week of to decide which day we would go to Jungfraujoch, which is one of the biggest attractions nearby Interlaken. I would also pack for almost every climate. So we visited in September, and when we landed in Zurich, it was 80 degrees Fahrenheit. When we got to Lucerne, it dropped down to 70, and then Interlaken was rainy and around 60 degrees. We went to Gornograt near Zermatt and it was about 40 degrees. So I would definitely bring clothes that can be layered. And this may be obvious, but definitely bring a pair of either hiking boots or something with thick soles. Standard sneakers probably won't give you the cushion that you need. And on that note, hiking sticks are not a terrible idea regardless of your age or physical condition. Sometimes it helps just to have that extra support. A couple of tips on food and drink options and eating out etiquette. Switzerland is one of the most expensive countries in the world. My personal opinion is that the food is nothing to write home about. So unless you're intentionally picking spots to eat out at, you can save a good buck by eating some meals from the grocery store. Coop, Migrolino, and Aldi are a few reliable brands. I think almost every day my breakfast was a yogurt, a pastry, and pre-made coffee from Coop, and lunch was a sandwich and salad. Switzerland also has some of the best drinking water in the world, so pretty much all tap water is a great option. There are also some drinking fountains in the mountain towns, and you'll see people fill up water from there, so make sure that you bring a reusable water bottle. As is the case with a lot of other European restaurants, waiters usually aren't proactive about checking in with you, so don't take it personally and flag them down when you are ready to order or want the check, etc. There also isn't a tipping culture here, so you don't need a tip unless you really want to. A lot of places don't allow you to drink water out of your own water bottle and charge you a pretty penny for bottled water, which in most cases ended up being more expensive than beer or wine, so keep that in mind. We didn't use cash at all while we were there. Most places that we spent money at accepted major credit cards. Oftentimes when you're paying with credit card, they offer you the option to choose in USD or CHF. CHF usually saves you a bit of money, so definitely offer that option. Also, sometimes a lot of stores are closed on Sunday for religious reasons, so make sure to take that into consideration when you are planning. With all that being said, here are the places that my family went in our one week trip to Switzerland in September 2023. I will have our itinerary listed out in the description below, and if you're interested in food options, I'm gonna put out some more content soon, so be sure to subscribe if you want more. So we kicked off in Zurich, which is where we all flew into. Zurich is the largest city in Switzerland and where a lot of businesses have offices, especially banks. Zurich's old town is a picturesque and lively area to walk through. I even wandered upon a small farmer's market on a bridge over a river that runs through the city. We checked out a few scenic areas. 
St. Peter's Church, which is the oldest parish church in Zurich. Lindenhof is an elevated park in the historic city center that gives you a great view of the city. From Zurich, we went to Lucerne. We spent about a day in Lucerne. They have a bunch of stunning landmarks like Chapel Bridge and the Lion Monument. Walking through the city along the water is especially captivating. You can do boat tours, those are included in the Swiss Travel Pass, and stop at little towns and villages. We went to two that I particularly liked, Wedges and Vitznau. At Vitznau, we took a trolley up to Rigikom, which had a spectacular lookout. Early the next morning, we went to Interlaken. Interlaken is where we spent most of our trip, about three to four days. It's in between two lakes and some mountains. What a lot of people do when they come here is do day trips to nearby towns, and that's what we did, and man, it was awesome. You should speak with a travel guide about the three-day pass and see if it makes sense for your plans. It should be decided sort of at the last minute based on the weather forecast, because you don't want to screw yourself over as it can be pricey if it's not fully utilized. Jungfrau Yoke is probably one of the most well-known nearby, partially because apparently the Korean drama Crash Landing on You had a popular scene filmed at that location. There's a building that has a lot of cool exhibit setups. One warning I have is that when we were there, there was a huge, huge crowd of tourists and certain photo ops had really long lines. So one thing that my sister wanted to do was go paragliding. It actually sounds scarier than it is. They have time slots available throughout the day, but depending on how busy the tourist season is, those slots can get booked up quickly. We ended up booking a 7 a.m. slot because we waited until the week of. You get paired with an experienced pilot. My guy Jiro had been doing paragliding for almost a decade, I think. It's about 20 minutes up in the air. Jiro asked me if I wanted to do some tricks, to which I said, hell yes. And towards the end, he even let me steer for a bit. It's kind of pricey. I think it was over $200 per person, so it's definitely not a must do, but it was really fun. I highly recommend Grindelwald, especially around September. I started listening to Studio Ghibli songs and it transported me to what felt like another world. I've never seen so much green and beauty in my life. Just lush green fields going on for so long, more cows than I've ever seen before, holy moly. I also truly adored Menlikin. Here's four words for you. It's a cow themed playground paradise. My sister and I spent an hour actually playing on the playground and I'm not kidding, I wasn't 27 in that moment, I was seven. I also loved watching the totally unbothered cows just munching grass. Watch out for the poop though, there's a lot of it. Wengen is at the bottom of the valley. We took a funicular down the mountain, which did cost us extra. We also did Lauterbrunnen. They have a very tall waterfall and there's a historic church. Urin was also a huge highlight of the trip. It certainly helped that the weather that day was absolutely delightful. First off, the town is super cute, but we did this incredible hike. It was easy to intermediate. My parents took it slow. It took us a few hours, but it was so worth it. There were more cows to start and another playground, which we loved. And it was partly cloudy that day, but then the clouds parted to reveal this beautiful mountain peak. And then this grandpa and his grandson came and drove like 30 cows down the mountain. It was iconic. And then we hiked down to Wanderegg and that was a truly stunning hike. That is where we just came from. We did take one day off in Interlaken to stay more local to our hotel. So within Interlaken, I have a few other suggestions. If the weather is good, you can go on a boat around Lake Brienz. We got off at Isselwalt, which is where another scene from Crash Landing on You was filmed, the finale, I believe. Apparently, after that finale aired, there was so much tourist traffic driven to the town that they installed a ticketing system where you have to pay $5 or something to go take a picture on the dock. We walked up this gorgeous hill and through this very quaint village, and those views were particularly stunning. Then we took a bus to Brienz, which has this one street that has a lot of houses with flowers, which was such a pretty sight. We ended our trip in Zermatt, which was stunning in its own way. So this city doesn't have any cars aside from these little buggies and public transit. I'm sure the Matterhorn is as glorious as they say, but I never saw it that day while we were looking out for it. We did, however, do a virtual reality tour of the Matterhorn, which was cool, and we spent almost two hours watching clouds and fog moving around.
The city center of Zermatt was very lively. There happened to be some sort of summer music festival and live music happening that we stumbled upon. There are also a bunch of small shops where you can explore art, food goods, souvenirs, other things. We did get treated to the clouds finally dissipating and seeing the Matterhorn fully emerge just as the sun set. It was huge, so close. You can see amazing views of the city at night from high up. A lot of hotels are higher up on the mountain so you can get that view. I wanted to give our hotel a shout out because that facility was really nice. Talk about the ultimate breakfast with a view. If you're looking for an amazing angle of the Matterhorn in Zermatt, Alpen Lodge Zermatt is a great place to stay. It's a boutique hotel. They only have a handful of units. One thing that is also really popular but I didn't get to do was the Glacier Express. You live on a train that has panoramic views. The seats look pretty comfortable. You see a little bit of everything. You see meadows, mountains, glaciers, villages. And depending on which tickets you're buying, oftentimes you can get off for a bit at each station to walk around. Okay, that was a ton of information. I hope you enjoyed this video and that this was helpful. I am putting out more travel content very soon about my latest trip to Lisbon and Paris. So be sure to subscribe if you wanna see more like this. Thanks and I will see you in the next one.